I remember that's what uh, Elder Scrolls games used to feel like. Like, Morrowind had this really epic sweeping score, and when you're out there in the wilderness and, like, you hear the the alien sounds of the strange creatures trilling and calling to one another, and you speculate, what do these things even look like? And you're standing out a vista above mushrooms, and you see in the far distance, like, stirring and Then it's stuff. really great. But when you're, like... Squatting in town actually, in front of a basket, not, stealing no, like, like stealing somebody's no. snacks just because you're bored, and the music's going da na na da na na da na na. It's kind of dumb. I like it's nice and like there. This is actually the worst, because there are like tools in this game that if I had them, I, this fight would be really easy. Um, so... Like what? Like if I had the Tripcaster right now, this fight would be significantly easier than it is. Oh, the Tripcaster, right. What the fuck's the um, there are a lot of cool weapons and tools in this game, but right now all I've got is just the bow, so I'm pretty much left with... Whoops. Okay, please move. Whoa! Double hit! Is that everybody? Am I good? I think I'm good. Cool. Alright. You know, I know bow and arrows became kind of a thing for a little bit there, but well this game really does make good use of the bow. Happy to have it back. Yeah. Which games did the bow and arrow correctly? What do you mean by correctly? Which games had a fun bow and arrow? That that felt uh, like more fun than having like a gun. Uh, it's one of the like few the highlights Tomb of Far Cry for did. me. That's interesting. I, I actually didn't like that the bow was so powerful in Far Cry. Although like it did eventually get outpaced by like silent sniper rifles. Right, right. I, I feel like the, the the bow is like... W the existence of bows is one of the clear kind of dividing lines between... Like, Far Cry 2 and Far Cry 3. <laughs> like, if you take Far Cry 2 and be like... I mean, oh, there yeah, are a lot of dividing to... lines between Far Cry 2 and Far Cry 3, uh, right? I, mean, I know, but most of them are like on the nose. Like, where it, yeah, it, it just true. kind of immediately is like, yeah, you know, oh, there there is a a storyline that deals with this and this and that theme. It's like, okay, yes, obviously that is a huge difference. Yes. But the fact that you can have a bow in Far Cry 3 and you just could not have a bow in Far Cry 2, I think is well, kind of well, well. An outcast one more interesting distinction. Surprised you saw me the way you keep looking every other direction to make I like sure you're watching. Careful, He's there. fun. You'll sprain your neck. It's always a pain in the neck when you show up, girl, one way or another. Karst is interesting when you think that, like, this is literally, like, one of the three or four people that ever talks to Aloy. Stop acting like a chuff. Is there a reason why you're acting so cranky today? Once you run the no, 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 Aloy, you grew up into an American, remember? Traders in mother's heart. Maybe I don't like losing customers. Traders who don't break the law and deal with outcasts, you mean? That's right. Our days of crime will be behind us, so long as you keep... So, I, I forget that. Does everyone just know you're an outcast because everyone, you, you know, if, if that's reasonable, it's a local area, guys. people would just know? I'm not or is there sure. Or kind of, like, vicious signifier? But you never know. <sighs> it you might be that I mean, she doesn't have any tattoos. I was gonna say, yeah, or no tattoos or paint or whatever that is. Well, I but, feel like if you can be outcast at any time, a tattoo is a bad marker. Yeah, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't know. I think it's probably just a, like, okay, everybody... This is, like, very tight-knit community. Everybody knows everybody, so people recognize you. Why do you take the risk trading with outcasts? This is a weird thing to say, but... Not too many Western video game characters have distinctive hairstyles. It's because you used to be and it's interesting that we do. Yeah. Got caught poking around one of the... I mean, her hairstyle was kind of controversial on release, wasn't it? Matriarch said I was tainted. I think it's, it's more 
Oh. The default outfit and the general clothing of the Nora. Like, we, we started with, like, Rost and his cabin, and it looks very, like, Norse and Celtic inspired, but you kind of get out here into the rest of the Embrace and meet more Nora, and you realize there's they're throwing in a lot of Native American imagery. Yeah, well, not in a way that's kind of awkward. Especially since the Nora turn out to be one of the mm, more spiritualist and primitive of the tribes in this game. But it must have been serious because his term is for life. Yeah, yeah, there are, there are. They're yeah. not like portrayed as super backwards or anything. Like there's. There's tribes that are more technologically advanced than them, but it's not like some massive gap or anything like that. Um, I can pay. Took down a scrapper not long ago. But they are kind of generally portrayed in that like noble savage sort of light, which is a little awkward since you're using Native American imagery and it's there's actually not a whole lot of people that look like they're Native Americans in this tribe. Yeah, I think when you especially go to the Mother's Heart, you see ju it's just a discrepancy. It's not even as if there's like, oh, there's like quite a few white people here DLC wearing like box. feathers and, and dreads. It's like, yeah, no, it's mostly just, white people guess, here I wearing feathers and dreads themselves. and like skins well, and just a bunch of shock there's like no people of color and if they are really? they're like very lately. Oh, there, there are black people Feels like you've stumbled and upon there's, the coach. there's people, very but... few. So far that I've seen, at least. But, but yeah, it is majority, like, white people. Anything else? Will you be around later, in case I want to make another trade? I'll be here. Same as usual, bring me the parts you harvest from any machines you hunt. Freaking cars. The better the parts, the more shards I'll pay. Be sure to take a close look at my inventory, though. Who knows? We're also kind of getting an idea of the uh, the the weird discrepancy this game has, where I guess that concludes our business. Uh, we have facial animations here that look very bad. Often they look they look stiff, and you get Uncanny Valley. Karst is one of the better ones because he's always got that kind of weird smirk on, but. Um, You've got like really good cutscene uh, animation and really good um, facial animation in some dialogue scenes, but others are clearly just made by like auto generated stuff, Mass Effect Andromeda style, and they do not look nearly as good, and it's awkward. Um... This this is far, far too late, uh, but you guys were. I didn't want to interrupt any of you guys. It looks kind of to me as though Karst had a, a f smoke alarm for a medallion. <laughs> Like that, that was what the, the art of the thing around his chest looked like. Wouldn't that be funny if you're just like in the post apocalypse and you find this like cool looking medallion? And then every so often, for apparently no reason, it just stops, starts getting off the most ear splitting, piercing shriek that anyone's <laughs> ever heard. And you just like can't figure out why. It's like you're just going to check in on your food. Well, what the fuck? What do you guys say to a round two in uh, the metal world? Okay. <laughs> Remember this place from last time. Oh. Have we not been back? I sound there? too excited, guys. No, I guess not. Um. I'm actually going here because there's a late game thing that I want to pick up, and now's a good time to do it. And also, there's a a lot of stuff in here in areas we couldn't get to in uh, when we were a kid. And by stuff, I mean resources that'll help us not have to spend too much time grinding on stuff, um, which is an altogether off-screen thing. But uh, first off, we've got this. I could see this, but not get to it. Some metal flower. Metal flower of unknown design, possibly used to promote seed germination. Includes an embedded code fragment. Trade sets of these flowers in Meridian for valuable rewards. So these are one of the collectibles. Okay. I know that this is a silly thing to think about, and that it's an adventure video game. That this is even not a legitimate cave, but just a facility uh, that is calcified. But I keep getting these like 
mental images of her just like stepping in a puddle and twisting her ankle and just like getting stuck down here and that's the end of the video game. I think about that a lot actually <laughs> whenever like I'm playing a video game where they're walking on like wet rocks. Oh, did I miss this? Yeah. If I can find a way into it now that I'm older. It's like, in reality, just wandering down a cave like this with no respiratory equipment or backup or anybody knowing you were there or other caving stuff would just be like dumber than any of the other scenarios in the video game. Yep. I've got like a 300% chance of slipping down a crevice and accidentally starving to death so, in a tiny, tight crack where you can't even turn around or move your legs for the rest of your life. So we just picked up a power cell that unlocked a level 25 quest. Don't think too much about that one. Um, there's a letter here we're not going to read, but basically like, hey, everything's fucked. But you'll remember they were all committing suicide the last time we were here. Right. Uh, that, that's one question. Um, do we have an indication of how long it's been? Uh, not as, at a, yeah, a long time, but okay. no specific well, indication. Clearly a long time, I mean, this, this shit does not happen overnight. I can't spare the weight. And we can't, okay, let's, uh, let's upgrade our carry capacity for resources. because that's going to fill up. Potion pouch is good. All right, cool. Animation right there. All right. Um, where am I? Where are we going? I got lost. I wasn't supposed to go in there. I am totally turned around at this point. I got very lost in here. I don't know if I got everything, but I wanted to leave because I had enough. It's you come it's back so in here as an adult, and you realize, wow, you're a lot. You were a lot smaller when you were a kid, and this level is a lot smaller now and more claustrophobic. All right, here we go. We're on our way out now. All right, that was cool. That was fun. We got one more quest that we can go and pick up, and it's around here somewhere. There it is. And yes, hunting animals in this game is important. You use them to make potions, and they're also common materials for uh, creating stuff. Welcome to this place! I'll show you everything with the arms wide open. Extremely happy if you just do that every single time we climb. <laughs> See what I can do. Do you need help? I have nothing against outcasts. Far from it. As you can tell, when people are out here in the wild, away from other people, they're somewhat less concerned about talking to outcasts. Especially if they have some convoluted task for us to do. He should have come home, but he didn't, and that makes sense. His camp was covered in blood. You um, you said your brother's camp. So this is an outcast that the Braves went looking for him. Was outcast for a crime, uh, but his uh, period of outcast had just come to a close. Is he really dead? You know what? Shawshank style. I don't want to make any big predictions or anything, but whenever there's like a this person disappeared and their home is covered in blood thing in a video game, it always turns out that like they're still alive and just ran away and dumped a bunch of blood all over the place. Because otherwise you don't fixate on that like specific clue when you present it. Otherwise you just say like, oh, their home was ransacked. Oh, it, it looks like something terrible happened to him. I'm not saying that is what happened here. I, I really don't know, but... 
It cost him ten years. I mean, I'm not even gonna hold up the pretense. That's exactly what I happened. I should have left him alone. <laughs> <laughs> Fallout has that Banishing quest line a lot. Those lost yeah. spirits are the forgotten. It's, it's, a case it's the perfect excuse to like to cover various parts of a town and, or the map. There was nothing I could Look do for to clues help. for the person, and you learn about the town and the story we and what happened to the people. Each day, then you see yeah. some skelly kings on the ground, and then it's like, yep. That's the story of Fallout. But he still hadn't come back. I begged the matriarchs to send Environmental skeletoning. All they found was a blood-soaked camp. The brave said he must be dead. But yep. I have to See, know yeah, the it's the way she keeps just so specifically mentioning that it's a blood-soaked camp. I'll do what I can to find your brother. You will? Then let me come with you. I won't be a bother. I know how to stay out of sight. I'm faster on my own. All they if found was a blood-soaked camp. Just find him then. And a deer without any Please. blood in it. And a bunch of... bunch of pots of blood. Most of which were empty. I, I just have the question the wisdom of, of anybody who... Them. After finding out their brother has disappeared and probably dead, the, the next best thing they can do is go to the highest rock they Get can off. find and just Let scream me. help, help, into the nothing. Oh, great, I pissed off something. A personal crisis. Won't a player character take any interest in my fate? I mean, it sort of makes sense, at, like, as the outcast, that it's sort of an interesting angle. The idea that we would help people with problems that, for whatever reasons, their culture cannot solve for them. Or like that, that deal with issues that are taboo or go against the kind of the the, the the group think of their particular people. Like the, the that that's an interesting concept. Yeah, and and as we go on, we'll we'll quickly learn that Aloy has very little respect for Nora customs or tradition, which is understandable. So what do you think all the post-apocalypse zip lines are made of? Because, like, it has to be something that can resist a lot of friction, that can support the weight of a human being, and is also available and readily, easily accessible post-apocalypse. Okay, I mean, uh, easily accessible, can support is the weight not... of a human being, can hold up to a lot of friction. Hmm. Damn. Well, like, usually it's nylon. But you're not yeah. going to have nylon ropes in the post-apocalypse. It's probably like cable wire. Yeah, it could definitely be something harvested from machines. Honestly, uh, I'm just cards on the table there. Uh, that was a straight line setup for some kind of your mom equivalent joke. But my heart, I found out my heart just really wasn't in it. <laughs> like, I got, I, I set it up and then I'm like... 